waste piling up. Disposable protective equipment, plastic packaging. Initially, there had been a hope that the slowdown in the world economy would be good for the planet. Air traffic almost stopped completely. Cruise ships were stranded in port and industrial pollution was reduced. But the pandemic has had negative consequences for the environment too. The world was already drowning under a sea of plastic waste, but the pandemic has made the situation worse. Face masks can stay in the environment for up to 450 years. It takes that long before they turn into invisible microplastic, so this issue is quite serious. As the human toll of the coronavirus mounts and the world economy struggles to adjust to the new normal, the wider impact on the environment is only now starting to become apparent. The global medical emergency has presented an opportunity to check on the health of the planet. As controversial new lockdown measures kick in in the capital, Madrid, is our report from Spain. Liliana Aldeguer is pulling plastic waste from the River Segura, near the Spanish city of Alicante. There's heaps of garbage everywhere. The problem is that plastic is very light, so it's easily swept up by the wind and flows down rivers where it ends up in the sea. Liliana says Spain's plastic waste problem has gotten worse since March, when the coronavirus outbreak began. Everything's got worse since the pandemic. We'd started using less disposable plastic packaging, but now Spanish people are buying even more plastic-wrapped items because they're scared of getting infected. Disposable plastic gloves are common in supermarkets. They're light and easily swept away. The pandemic has led to a waste crisis. Now, even environmentally conscious consumers feel safer buying plastic-wrapped products. Here, 200 kilometers further south, near the city of Almería, Spanish farmers are growing bell peppers and melons under vast plastic sheets. Some of them dispose of old sheets illegally, but catching the culprits is tricky. We managed to find a former farmer who was willing to talk about the problem. Growing crops is our livelihood, but images like these tarnish our image. A few farmers are ruining everyone's image. Paco Toledano and his colleagues from the marine conservation organization, Promar, study what happens to plastic waste in the sea. They take samples to have them checked for tiny plastic particles. These substances are toxic. They are poisonous chemical products that break down in the sea. We shouldn't only be concerned about plastic bags floating around. The tiny plastic particles you can only see under a microscope are even more dangerous. Paco's team have their latest sample examined at a lab. And they find yet more plastic particles. This plastic passes through the food chain, through fish, and ends up in our bodies too. We also absorb it through our skin when we swim. We're basically contaminating ourselves. Plastic waste in the sea poses a serious health risk to humans and animals alike. That's why Liliana Aldeguer spends so much time cleaning up. She says the pandemic shouldn't serve as an excuse for us to produce even more garbage. She says protecting the environment also keeps us healthy. The two are connected. If we destroy the environment, we also endanger our own health. We are seeing this now during coronavirus pandemic. We're not thinking ahead, not protecting the environment, and not treating animals like we should. The European Union wants to cut back on single-use plastics. But these days, due to the pandemic, the very opposite is happening. It takes some 500 years for these materials to decompose, so they'll be with us for generations. Well, let's speak to Jan-Peter Schemmel. He's CEO of the Erko Institute for Applied 
ecology here in Berlin. Thanks a lot for joining us. So we saw in our report people there uh, choosing plastic packaging for their food because they think it's safer given the pandemic. I mean, is there a danger that this pandemic is making our day-to-day -day lives less uh, ecologically sustainable? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, of course, you're right that people, restaurants, small businesses with uh, a lot of customer interfaces uh, use more disposables now than they used to directly before the pandemic. But there's, of course, also another part of the story, and that is that we saw a lot and see a lot of um, changes of patterns of uh, behavior and consumption that actually move towards more sustainability, starting with food. In Germany, for example, the consumption of regionally and ecologically produced food has increased during the pandemic, uh, both beneficial for the environment. We saw lots of changes in mobility patterns, less business trips, less commuting to work, more home office. Some of those probably will uh, be maintained after the pandemic. And of course, due to lockdowns, which is not a positive thing, for the economy and for the humans, but nevertheless, consumption and production went down and therefore also energy use, raw material use, and therefore uh, it was um, something where stress on the environment went down. So overall, I would say um, it's more the opposite, that uh, we didn't see patterns change in a way um, that uh, are environmentally more destructive, although disposable is probably uh, one point where it did. Yeah, so that's in terms of individual behavior, but globally, can we say that this pandemic has been good or bad for the environment? I think that rests still to be seen. Um, in the immediate effect, as I said, consumption production went down. Um, there was no air travel for some time. Many factories went on uh, on leave, pretty much put their people on leave, didn't work. Um, so it was like a pause for the environment, for the stress on the environment in most areas. Um, and um, But as I, it is with a pause button, if you push play again, then the question is um, whether the situation will be different. So that depends a lot on whether companies and governments will um, rethink their business models or their investment um, support and change things. For example, in fashion, um, we've heard from some companies saying they, um, due to resilience questions of their value chain, will move away from fast fashion. Um, and fast fashion is nothing else than disposable fashion and therefore uh, detrimental to the environment if you look at how much water cotton, for example, needs and a T-shirt. So um, the question will be how many actors in the economy and from the government side will change uh, their way of doing business. Yeah, in terms of governments, as they seek to get economies going again, what sort of things should they be bearing in mind? Well, first of all, it's, it's totally understandable that they have to look at um, easing um, the burden for put particularly the social um, disadvantage, socially disadvantaged um, that the pandemic and the lockdowns uh, bring about. At the same time, um, now taking money for recovery packages, they should look into where they invest. And there, of course, they should invest in more sustainable technologies. We have a lot of transitions in the energy sector and the transport sector and the agricultural sector and the building sector. We need to move to a circular economy. In all these areas, it would be helpful and um, oriented towards the future if governments use their money to support business models of the future. That means electric vehicles, for example, in the transport sector. That means thinking about how to um, uh, encourage refurbishing of homes and developing more sustainable construction materials. That means um, to move in the agricultural sector away from quantity to quality. All these are things that they should incorporate into their uh, recovery packages Many do, more so than in the financial crisis about 10 years ago, but still not enough. Um, if you compare how much money goes into clearly environmentally beneficial investments compared to the classical um, uh, business models, then it is not enough given the urgency that we have in all those sectors. Jan-Peter Schemmel from the Oko Institute for Applied Ecology. Thanks a lot for joining us. And now for one of your questions to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. How hopeful is the drug interferon beta when it comes to fighting COVID-19? 
Interferons are proteins produced by the immune system that play a key role in communication in the body during a viral infection. Um, they, they warn cells that an invader is on the loose, uh, giving them time to, to ramp up additional defenses. And, and there's evidence that one reason COVID-19 can turn so serious is that SARS-CoV-2 seems to suppress interferon production in some way early in the infection process. Um, the immune system is horrendously complicated. Um, the best description of it I've heard compares the many complex interactions between different molecules and, and cells to, to a ball of spaghetti. Um, so it's hard to nail down exactly what's going on. But the suspicion that interferon production is being turned off, um, that's led researchers to look at whether giving interferons to patients therapeutically might lessen COVID-19 severity. Um, back in July, a, a British company testing inhaled doses of an interferon called interferon beta reported in a small-scale study that, that giving it to early-stage patients cut their chances of developing severe breathing difficulties dramatically, and it significantly reduced their hospital stays. Um, the company is now in further testing with the compound. Um, other research indicates that the timing, uh, when exactly the signaling protein is administered, that that could play a very key role in how the body reacts to treatment with it. So, so to answer the question, um, researchers are quite hopeful that interferon beta will prove as effective as, as early testing indicates, but, but we're still waiting for more detailed results.